Welcome to today's five-minute Bible study in the book of Deuteronomy. We're still looking at Deuteronomy chapter 5. We've been examining the Ten Commandments. So far, we've looked at the first four commandments. And today, we're at verse 16 of chapter 5, which is the fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother. But before we begin to look at the fifth commandment in detail, uh, we realize immediately that we've moved into the second part of the Ten Commandments. In other words, even the most casual reading of the Ten Commandments makes you realize they are divided into two parts. Part one comprises the first four commandments, and part two commands, uh, comprises the, the next six commandments. And the division is quite easy to see. The first four commandments have to do with our relationship with God. And then the second six commandments have to do with our relationship with each other. So we've been looking at the first part of the Ten Commandments having to do with our relationship with God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make an image to worship. I alone am your object of worship. You shall not misuse my name. You shall not take my name in vain. And you shall observe the Sabbath day, a Sabbath unto the Lord. So the first four commandments, as we've seen quite clearly, all relate to our relationship with God. And then as we move into the, the next six, they're going to relate to our relationship with one another, honoring your father and mother, uh, not taking each other's lives, uh, not stealing from one another, this sort of thing. So the first four deal with our relationship with God, and then the second six deal with our relationship with one another. Now, the, the progression is quite natural. It is only when we are right with God, the first four, that we can be right with each other, the second six. It's only when our relationship with God is as it should be, numbers one through four, that our relationship with one another can also be as it should be. So we would quite easily understand why the, the commandments are divided into two parts and why the first section deals with our relationship with God and then the second part deals with our relationship with one another. You remember when Jesus was once asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, all of your strength. That's the first four commandments. And then he said the second command is like unto it, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's the second six commandments. So what Jesus did was he, he summarized uh, the Ten Commandments uh, in those great commands of the law of love. So love the Lord your God with all of your heart. That's the first four. That's what we've been looking at. And then love your neighbor as yourself. That's the next six. That's what we'll be looking at in the coming days. So when we think about the Ten Commandments, we, we naturally see those two divisions. One through four, dealing with our love of God. We love him with all of our heart. And numbers uh, five through ten, dealing with our love of each other. We love our neighbor as ourselves. So tomorrow we're going to start looking in some detail at the, the second six. But I want to say one thing more about the first four, and that has to do with uh, the fourth man, but remember the Sabbath day. You may wonder, do we still keep the Sabbath day literally in the world today? Well, in one sense, we do not. You see, the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week, which is Saturday. So in the Old Testament, the day of rest and the day of worship is the seventh day day of Saturday. But in the New Testament, in the New Testament church, that day of Sabbath gets moved to the first day of the week, the Lord's Day. Sunday is the first day of the week, not the seventh day. And the New Testament church began to observe their Sabbath on the first day of the week, not the Sabbath. Why? Because that was the day of resurrection. Jesus rose from the grave on the first day of the week, Sunday. And so the early church began to observe their day of rest and their day of worship on the first day of the week, on the Lord's Day. So we still keep the principle of the Sabbath, not in the literal sense of the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day, but we keep the principle of the Sabbath on the first day of the week, the Lord's Day, the day of resurrection. Now we see this already mentioned in the New Testament. Let me give you two references. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, Paul tells the Corinthian churches to take up a relief offering for the churches in Jerusalem. But notice what he says about that. <clears throat> Chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Now about the collection for the Lord's people, 
this is in Jerusalem, do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up, so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. He tells them to make the collection on the first day of every week. Why the first day of every week? Because that's the day they come together to worship. Already in the Corinthian church, they've begun to see the Lord's Day, the first day of the week, as their day of Sabbath. It's also mentioned in the book of, of Revelation, uh, chapter 1, when the apostle John begins to talk about how he received this revelation from the Lord. That's what he says in verse 9. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and the kingdom and patient endurance that are, in Je that are ours in Jesus, I was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet say, Write on the scroll what you see. So it says that he's received this revelation of the Lord on the Lord's day. The Lord's day is Sunday, the first day of the week. So in the New Testament, and still today in the church for the most part, we have moved our observance of the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day. So we keep the Lord's day as a Sabbath because it was on the Lord's day on Sunday that our Lord rose from the grave. So we still maintain the Sabbath principle, but we do it on the Lord's day on the first day of the week on Sunday. I hope you join us next time for our five-minute Bible study in the book of Deuteronomy. We'll begin looking at the fifth commandment, the second group of commandments, our relationship with one another. Hope you join us for that.